Uh, my name is Zishan Ahmed. I'm a staff scientist at the Slack National Accelerator Laboratory. Um, I'm a cosmologist uh, and I'm an experimental physicist. Um, so uh, I build instrumentation to try to image the earliest moments of the universe and, uh, and try to understand uh, the data that these instruments produce um, so that we, we develop a better understanding of uh, how the universe started and how it's evolved since and how we're here today. Growing up, uh, perhaps like many kids, I was interested in, uh, in space and, and I had an inclination towards science and math and technology and I, I, I went to college actually uh, interested in becoming a mechanical engineer. Uh, and I thought I would build uh, rocket ships or something. Um, but in, in college, uh, I was at one point exposed to uh, engineering in big phys physics experiments. So at that point, I decided to think more about physics and cosmology, and I went to grad school for physics and cosmology, and that's how it took off. So the area that we've, we, we've been thinking a lot about is um, how do you build these big camera sensors uh, that need to be kept very cold, need to be kept cryogenically cold uh, at a tenth of a degree above absolute zero. And when you're reading out these camera sensors, how do you transport all these signals out without introducing heat into the system? You're trying to keep this cold. And so what you do is you build a signal multiplexing system uh, that tries to pack in as much information into the, the limited amount of wiring that you have available to you uh, for the camera. In my group in particular, uh, we look at, we've been looking at how to build sophisticated room temperature electronics to talk to these cryogenic multiplexers that are, that are gathering the signals from the camera sensors. Um, so over the past couple of years, uh, we have, uh, we've built a, a brand new uh, a customized to Simons Observatory uh, 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 camera readout electronic system, uh, um, and uh, we are we we we've had successful prototyping, uh, and the first production units that uh, Simons Observatory will use for its cameras are in production now, and uh, and we'll hope to have them out soon for integration with the cameras. The warm electronics package we've developed is, is called SMURF, um, and it's spelt with all cap letters except for the U in there, which is small. And it stands for uh, Slack Microresonator RF, and then you add electronics at the end of it, so you call it SMURF Electronics. And I totally backronymed this because I wanted a, a, a fun, catchy name. Um, and the MU together are supposed to be micro or microwave. Building uh, Smurf uh, has been an incredible technical challenge, which we think we've mostly conquered. In fact, I, I, I know now that we're in a place that we're going into production, things are looking good on, on the, the electronics as well as the supporting software. You have your sensors, transition net sensors. Each transition net sensor couples to a superconducting microresonator. Uh, that has a unique frequency between 4 and 8 gigahertz. The 4 and 8 gigahertz band uh, that we use is picked because it's, um, it's used a lot by commercial telecom. So a lot of commercial products, parts, testing equipment, you know, even, even Smurf is packaged in standard tele telecommunication architecture that's designed for this frequency band. Each channel on a wafer has a unique uh, a microresonator that, that it's attached to. And so when the signal on the TES, the transition net sensor, changes, it changes the, the unique frequency of the resonator a little bit. And if you're constantly monitoring all 2,000 uh, uh, sensors worth of resonators with your electronic system, this is where the, 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 the cutting edge nature of the, the electronics matters, that you're able to track them in real time, you see what the individual frequencies are, and shifts that occur at the time scale in which you're scanning the sky and your sky signal is changing as you're looking at different features of CMB, those resonators shift, the electronics register that shift, and that's your signal. So we've already 
pushed out about three or four boards uh, to testing facilities, because as they're, they're ramping up to be able to get detectors and test them, uh, our next, this product, the, 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 the batch production we've started is the first 10 or 15 boards that'll be used for the commissioning of the LAT and SAT. Um, uh, and then if all of that looks good, then we'll, we'll trigger the production of the, the rest of the um, complements. So we're, we're looking at a total of about 45 boards right now. Uh, I'm incredibly interested in um, uh, using the CMB as a backlight uh, for studying all the structure that has evolved over most of the history of the universe. So the CMB gets emitted 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Uh, and then it travels, for the most part, unimpeded, but it's kind of snaking its way around structure. Uh, and this is called lensing. So C the CMB light gets lensed by intervening um, uh, matter. Um, and so uh, this is an exciting new uh, area of CMB science that, that is waiting to be tapped um, uh, because it enables us to create maps of all the dark matter uh, and all the structure uh, that sits between us today, you know, uh, uh, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, and that, that early initial point, which was 380,000 years. Um, infl inflation uh, is, is, uh, is a very, very interesting area. So this is how the bang of the Big Bang occurs, right? What is that initial process that, um, that sets up uh, 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 the seed uh, of all of the structure of the universe. Um, uh, and these are all, all of these are things that Simon's Observatory uh, uh, might, might be able to answer. Uh, and uh, so that's science motivation, right? And you, you do this thing, and you have to build something to be able to make these measurements, and so you end up, you have to do a lot of engineering. And that's, uh, that, that's, that's how, you know, the, the, the work that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis today seems a bit far away from the from the scientific part of it, but you know, we we do analysis, but to be able to enable en enable that analysis and you know measure these quantities and understand these things, you've got to, somebody's got to build the electronics <laughs> to read out the camera sensors, and so so that's I think how it all fits together. Mm -hmm.